Hey guys, this is Srini and you're watching Python tutorial videos on my channel Python for Microscopists uh, on YouTube. And the last couple of tutorials we talked about uh, OpenCV uh, library as part of uh, Python and uh, its uh, basic functionalities and let's uh, pretty much uh, build on that today. Uh, let's look at the thresholding. Let's visit that one more time because that is one of the key operations that we do as part of image processing. And uh, if uh, there is a lot of noise in uh, the thresholded image, how do we clean it? You know, by using erosion, dilation, and a couple of other morphological operations. So let's go ahead and jump in. And uh, I'm using Spider IDE, which is part of Anaconda distribution. And again, I love it because it comes with most of the libraries prepackaged. So as usual, let's go ahead and import the right library. So I'm gonna do import CV2. This is our open CV. And I'm going to also import NumPy as NP because I always tend to use one, at least one functionality uh, that's available in NumPy uh, you know, to manipulate my array. Uh, and then also from matplotlib import pyplot as plt. Okay. And this is for, again, as you know, uh, mapping, you know, plotting, plotting uh, histograms or plotting or images. So uh, let's start with uh, defining a variable. I, I'm calling it IMG as usual. This is nothing but uh, I'm assigning our image array to this variable. So image dot, uh, uh, this, is, this is, I went back to a different uh, package there. So cv2 dot show. Uh, I guess I need some copy. I'm mixing up uh, different uh, terms here. So cv2 dot read, and let me focus now. And this is under folder called images, and uh, I labeled it BSE underscore Google, Google noisy dot JPEG. This is my input image. Now, I want to read this image as a gray level, so I'm gonna put zero right there. If I put one, that would be a color image. This is a gray level image anyway. Now, so once I have this image, uh, let's go ahead and look at it. CV2 dot now is the time for shell. Okay, I want to look at this image. This is our original image and I assigned this to IMG and I have done this mistake of numerous times of uh, uh, running the algorithm, running this code right now, uh, which hangs up the computer. That's because every time you use cv2.imshow, always use cv2.wait and put some time in there. How long do you want the uh, program to wait before it does the next task, which is cv2 dot destroy all windows. Now, by putting zero, I'm telling it that it's infinity. You know, well, it's it's a bit weird to put zero, uh, but uh, zero is infinity. If you put 1000 there, that's 1000 milliseconds. Okay, so after 1000 milliseconds, it destroys all windows. But now, since I put zero, the next line is immaterial. So let's go ahead and open this image. And uh, this is how it looks like. It's a, it's a grayscale uh, image of a what appears to be a piece of rock uh, on a scanning electron microscope. Again, that doesn't matter for now. Uh, and I've added artificial noise to this image so we can make it a bit challenging. So let's go ahead and try to threshold this image. So if you look at histogram, let's also look at histogram, plt.histogram, and we want to plot histogram of our image. It's a 2D array, so I need to flatten it into a 1D array. And how many bins? 100, and what is the range? 0 to 255, because this is an 8-bit image, and it has 255, 0 to 255 uh, levels. So let's go ahead and plot this. And here it is on the right hand side, you can see there seems to be a bunch of pixels uh, centered around 50, bunch of pixels centered around 150, and a few pixels centered around 250, and uh, a valley around 100 or so. So if we do OTSU based thresholding, which is an automatic thresholding where we are not telling the program where to separate the histogram, uh, hopefully also find something around 100. Okay, we'll verify that in a second. Let me go ahead and uh, segment this. So I'm, this is the convention, well, at least the one I use. 
which is uh, I define these two. I'm unpacking this, uh, uh, you know, into two two uh, variables. One I called it R E T, the other one T H. I'm going to explain that in a second. C V two dot threshold, okay, and I want to threshold my image, so I M G and the first variable, I mean, the first uh, parameter here is zero, which is uh, because I'm going to use Otsu, I'm gonna say, look at everything from zero all the way up to 255, okay? If I'm gonna use only binary thresholding, just that, then the this is where I would put 100 because I'm telling the system where to separate the histogram, okay? And the next parameter here, I'm gonna, put 255. This is nothing but once the thresholding is done, what value do we want to assign to all the thresholded pixels? I want to assign, assign 255 because when I open the image, it looks like a black and white image. Black, all the pixels corresponding to one gray level, white corresponding to the other. Remember, Otsu is a binary threshold. It just finds one location where the best position is to do this thresholding. And the next argument is where I tell how to do this thresholding. So I want to do both threshold underscore binary plus cv2.thresh and otsu. So this is uh, otsu. That's it. This is as simple as this. So now we have done our thresholding. And uh, if we go ahead, let me go ahead and comment this out. And uh, in addition to original image, I want to plot, I want to show our thresholded image. So let me just call this Otsu image. And we assigned it to a variable uh, called th. By the way, I promised to explain this. So let me go ahead and do that. The ret is uh, nothing but the value that Otsu finds for the optimal thresholding position or the pixel value, yeah, for optimal thresholding. TH is nothing but the array that it generates after thresholding. This is nothing but our output image. So that's why I'm plotting this output image here. So we should see two windows in a second. The first one showing the original image on the left and the one I just moved to the right. This is the Otsu thresholded image. That's not bad. It actually thresholded all the pixels above certain gray level. So all of these are white. Again, why are they white? Because we said we assigned a value of 255 for all of our thresholded uh, pixels. Uh, there's a lot of single spikes, single isolated islands of single pixels that are in white here. And let's go ahead and clean these pixels up. Okay, and the way we do that is pretty much the same if you have done, uh, uh, if you have used any desktop based image processing software, for example, the open source software like ImageJ. Uh, once you threshold it, the next operation you do is probably erosion and dilation. That's exactly what we are trying to do here. As the name suggests, erosion is nothing but eroding certain pixels, meaning removing certain pixels. Dilation is, as the name suggests again, uh, dilating the pixels, you know, adding the pixels. And how many pixels do you erode and dilate? That's defined by our kernel that we can actually define. So let's go ahead and define our kernel. And I'm gonna, uh, for the kernel, I'm gonna uh, define a three by three matrix of all ones, okay? And we learned from our NumPy tutorial how to, do, how to create NumPy arrays with certain specific values, especially with one. So all I do is uh, this, and I'm gonna just do three by three uh, matrix. And at this point, I can also define the data type of these. So let me go ahead and define this as u int eight, okay? So these are all integers, one, 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 and one, one, one. That's pretty much it. So this, uh, so now we defined a kernel if you want. In fact, I think you should see how it looks like. So when I run these lines, you should see a kernel printed on the right-hand side. You see all ones, okay? It's a three by three matrix of all ones. So now that I define the kernel, what do we wanna do? So let's go ahead and do erosion on our thresholded image. So the way to do that is cv2.erode, I believe it is erode, and uh, on what image? 
th and are using what kernel the kernel that we just defined and how many times do we want this done iterations equal to one okay just one time iterations two means it does it twice that's pretty much it um, let's uh, let's go ahead and look at that image actually erosion so let's just say eroded image and we called it erosion so when I run this we should see three windows now the third window is right here let me go ahead and move this here so uh, it did a an excellent job in the background right there all these isolated pixels are completely cleaned up but we kind of added I mean we also removed some of these pixels in here because to begin with there were a lot of isolated uh, gaps right here you know dots right here and then it actually removed some of these pixels and now those become became larger so we can uh, dilate now you know to fill this fill these uh, uh, you know regions inside uh, so the way to do that is exactly opposite of erosion let's just do dilate so this is uh, let's just call it the ila uh, uh, we can just call it uh, I was wondering if I can live with wrong spelling but apparently I cannot so I want to dilate I want to B-I-L-A-T-E I want to dilate the image that's got eroded okay so my input image for dilation is the eroded image this is because now at this step the isolated islands are cleaned when I do dilation, those islands are not available anymore because they're all gone. It only dilates wherever there is uh, some room here. So let's go ahead and look at dilated image. And this is, uh, in fact, let's just call it eroded plus dilated because that's exactly what we have done. So now our image should look better, much better, you see? But still, I have some, you know, if I do two iterations, let's go ahead and do two iterations, okay? If we do two iterations for dilation, that hopefully should be filled completely, the region in there. There you go. So this is eroded plus dilated, but dilated twice. This looks amazing. This looks perfect. So if you do it in a manual way, this is exactly what uh, uh, I would have done. Now, let me go back to our uh, iterations to be one. And let me add one more operation called opening, okay? And this is cv2 dot, and I don't think this is just open, so I have like these three written down. So let me go ahead and cheat, and this is called cv2 dot morphology. So let me go ahead and cop copy this, okay? And, uh, sorry, let me delete this. So it's cv2 dot morphology ex. I tried to remember this, but there is no way I can remember uh, this so uh, let me let me copy and I want to do this opening operation on my Otsu image the original image and again cv2 dot uh, and this is m o r p h morphological operation and I believe this is just o p e n and let's use the same kernel uh, that we generated earlier the reason I'm doing this is uh, will be apparent in a second actually so let me go ahead and print this uh, image let's not show original image anymore we have too many windows floating around and this is opened image and i'm gonna call this ope and ing right yep let's go ahead and run this now you see that let me pull this to this side the eroded on the left hand side you have eroded plus dilated image on the right hand side we have opened image they both look identical not not much well no difference at all i almost said not much difference no difference at all whatsoever there is a single pixel hanging out up here there is a pixel up there two pixels here a few pixels here two pixels a few pixels these are identical that is because opening operation is nothing but erosion followed by dilation so instead of doing one erosion one dilation you could have just done opening okay closing is exactly the opposite Closing is dilation followed by erosion, okay? There are other operations called, uh, uh, one is gradient, 
Okay, I believe uh, gradient is the difference between the dilated image and eroded image. Well, why do we need to do on certain uh, on certain type of uh, uh, images where you have you know certain type of features? That type of operations will highlight you know those those regions. You know this is not a great example to show that, so I'm not going to show that. There is another operation called top hat. Okay, top hat is nothing but the difference between the input image and the opened image. You need you see the opening operation. So input image minus opened image is called top hat. There is another operation called a uh, black hat, uh, the, which is uh, 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 which is uh, exactly opposite of top hat. So in this example, it is a closed image minus uh, the input image. Okay. So top hat is input image minus opened image. Black hat is a closed image minus input image. So test it out at your own time. Uh, they all may yield something interesting depending on your input image uh, and the uh, type of features you're looking for. But this image, uh, it's, it's a bad one to demonstrate all of those other ones. So the key point here is your thresholded image may have certain features that you want to clean up. And uh, the, there are certain morphological operations at your disposal like erosion, dilation, opening, closing, and a, whole, a couple others that I mentioned to clean your image up. But after all of this, I'm going to show you an easier way of actually to clean up your images, which is to have a clean image to begin with. But you may not have clean images to begin with. So the next best thing is to do denoising. I talked about denoising in my previous tutorials anyway, so I'm not going to uh, discuss exactly what it is and uh, various options you have. But one of the good ones that I like is called uh, a median uh, operation. The reason is it does a great job denoising, but it also uh, retains the edges. Other filters, they can blur your images. In fact, the best denoising that I like for microscope images is called non-local means denoising. Look it up. It's, I believe it's part of scikit image, but let's just do denoising for now. Okay. So this is cv2.median blur. For some reason, they call it blur and not a filter. I consider median to be a filter. Okay. So let's just do median blur and on our original image and with a kernel size of three. Let me delete all of this other stuff that we do not um, care about right now. And let's delete, uh, let's, uh, well, let's plot median image, okay? So we see exactly how it looks like. And let's uh, also plot the thresholded image. And uh, this would be th. And this would be our, let's say this is our original image. Okay, and that would be our IMG. So uh, ignore everything I just told you or erase everything uh, or <laughs> uh, I just told you about erode, dilate and all of that for now. Okay, those are really important if you cannot clean the image using any of these other techniques. But for this image, I can use a median filter or a median blur uh, to clean up my input image and once it's cleaned up I should change this to median. I'm going to threshold the image using Otsu Okay on the same uh, on my cleaned up image and then I'm going to show you the original image median image and the thresholded image That's all I'm doing right now. Okay, let's go ahead and run this and look how amazing the segmentation is Okay, this is great. This is much better than doing our erosion dilation this tells you the importance of starting with clean images to begin with. But if you do not have clean images, we do have great filters, uh, choice of great filters, because here is our input image, here is our median filter. M not much information is lost. Your grays remain there and medium grays are there and even that region is there. I mean, you can see how the edges are still pre uh, preserved. And, and that much of cleaning gave us a result that looks pretty amazing right there, okay? So uh, this is uh, the lesson from today, you know, the lesson is nothing can beat great images, but if you don't have great signal to noise to begin with, you can get uh, clean it up using median filter or non-local means filter, or if it doesn't improve even after using these filters, then you have a choice of uh, some morphological operations like erosion, dilation, opening, closing, 
top hats uh, uh, and black hat and uh, gradient filter, for example, uh, not gradient filter, gradient uh, uh, operation, you know, morphological operation. So uh, I hope you found this tutorial to be useful and please go ahead and like this video if you like it and subscribe to my channel if you find uh, it useful because that is one of my motivations to create more uh, tutorials for you. So please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and let's talk, uh, continue talking about Otsu in our next uh, tutorial. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, let's talk in our next tutorial. Thanks.